Welcome to today's session, how to do a residual land valuation. I would like to show you how you can do this in, uh, in Excel by going through uh, this uh, financial model. As you can see, this is a very uh, simple uh, financial model. It's basically one uh, worksheet and it contains the, uh, the output, the calculations and also the assumptions which are needed to run this analysis. What is now a residual land value? Um, the objective of this model is that you want to figure out the value of a piece of land and this piece of land has um, construction rights and the way to figure that out is to uh, basically uh, analyze how much is the land worth to a developer who will basically buy the land, develop it and then sells it to end users. So the way this works is that you have to put yourselves into the shoes of the developer he will be able to sell the uh, developed land, res respective real estate, at a certain price. He will have to incur uh, development costs. He will want to reserve a uh, profit margin for himself. And after deducting this, this will give you a figure which he is able to afford to pay for, for, your, for your land. So the objective is to, uh, to mirror this calculation of him and then to, uh, <coughs> to basically figure out this, um, uh, what's, what's the, the worth of the land. Now, how can you do this? The first step is to put um, to go through the um, the parcel of land. Uh, you have to analyze how many hectares or what's the area there in total. How much is the usable and how much is the non-usable part? This is basically the calculation here. This worksheet um, has a switch here, so one can uh, simply change the uh, the unit. For, for both the lands and also for the gross area. I can put in uh, acres in case I want here. I choose to uh, look at, um, at the project which is in hectare and uh, square meters. So I have um, 70 hectares, 700,000 square meters. I know an average unit is our low-rise residential building, 2,000 square meters of land. So I can figure out the number of um, of uh, units or residential villas I want to a developer can can basically develop and sell on this uh, on this piece of land. Then the next item is to look at the um, <coughs> once developed how much uh, revenues he can obtain and this is simply by multiplying the number of units times the average uh, selling price per, per unit. The next question is how much are the uh, construction costs the construction costs are basically a function of the uh, square meters to be uh, developed. This is based on an estimate of um, how many uh, square meters all these units have. The average villa here has 400 square meters. Um, if you assume a certain uh, cost <coughs> to develop, you can multiply and you get the uh, development uh, cost. Now, <coughs> what um, the calculation now um, uh, we'll have to do the following. You will have to uh, look at what are the revenues for, for the developer, then what are his costs, which basically construction costs are the main part, but you, the developer will also have um, other types of costs and you basically have to work through and think through um, how much he has to pay for service, uh, for transaction fees, and basically um, go through and and see what, what kind of budget this, uh, this developer has. So this gives you this, uh, his revenues, his costs, then the developer will want to make a certain uh, profit, so assuming this to be between 10 to 20% uh, as a starting point, you enter here, um, for instance, 20%, and then after um, deducting um, the cost plus the required profit, this gives you the residual land value, these are up here about 12 million, um, 11.8 million uh, US, US dollar. And um, yeah, so basically this means you have already derived uh, this figure. Now the question, the real question now is, is this figure correct? And if you just uh, do this calculation, the answer is no, you don't know, because it can be that um, developer this margin is very uh, is very high or it can be that it's too low so you don't know so you need to fine-tune and figure out a bit in more detail if that's a reasonable value 
And the way to do that is to also to go one step further and actually look at the returns of the developer. How how profitable is that project for the developer to develop it? And in order to do uh, to figure that out, we go here and we put a schedule together. When will these uh, revenues occur? When does the developer has to pay all the costs? I can simply, uh, in this model, I can simply uh, allocate um, the costs as, a, as, I, as I like and <clears throat> below the cost will be updated here. So now I go, uh, go back again, I delete here and, and it will basically allocate me the costs. And now I can do a check and can say, okay, the, uh, <clears throat> the revenues, uh, 105 uh, million in this case, which corresponds to this figure here, they will be uh, he will be able to sell once a part once it's being it's under construction and the other the larger part once it's uh, it's um, the <clears throat> it's finished. Then in terms of the the costs, the same. When does does each of these costs cost has to be uh, has to be paid? Some are upfront, some are during the um, the uh, construction project, and some are at the end of the uh, um, end of the period. And here in this case, what we also do is we do a check. We see in terms of cost per hectare of land, what is, how does that correspond to? And also in terms of um, square meter GFA, what are the costs, um, income, profit, costs per square meter uh, GFA? You see here, based on this calculation, he uh, sells at 750 per square meter. His costs are 515, 85 uh, dollars per square meter um, per square meter of, uh, <clears throat> of of land, and then the profit is 150 per square meter of GF of GFA. And we can go now even even further. If he has to pay um, this 11.8 million for the land, we know his unlevered uh, free cash flow. We can now calculate um, his levered cash flow by deducting the finance costs and the, the debt, assuming he can get some uh, debt financing. The way to do that is, in this case, is that we simply assume how much of the end selling price he can finance uh, from a bank via debt financing. And then we, we shortly cross-check how much does this com compare if we just Take the development cost. These are seventy-three percent of develop, development cost financed by the banks. If you also add the land, this would be sixty-three uh, percent. So maybe this even, even too low. It can. It, it 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 fully depends on the bank. You will need to, maybe, um, um, <clears throat> talk to the bank and see what they, what are their lending uh, conditions to to validate this. But the point here is that you can, quite accurately uh, figure out. What, how much bank financing a developer can get, what is his uh, levered uh, free cash flows. And second, another aspect is, most people forget that, um, taxes also. This can be quite uh, significant. In some um, jurisdictions, especially <clears throat> short terms, you have quite high tax rates, so a developer will have to um, deal with taxes. The question is, um, when they will be paid, normally at the end of the development project. And in this case, it's just a simple calculation, uh, tax rate times the project the profit. But this one depends on um, the jurisdiction and also on the tax and, uh, and legal uh, structure. So this, after now accounting also for taxes, we have to leave it uh, free cash flow after, after tax. And yeah, so <clears throat> we have here the figures together. We also have here the um, after-tax profit, 8.9 million. The before-tax profit was 11.8. And this is now summarized here in this um, in this table. And now the way to read that is <clears throat> the, the proje project requires investments of $72 million, a project profit of 21. So this means the project itself makes um, 1.3 times a multiple. Now a developer will most likely will use uh, debt financing. So his investment, uh, we now look at just the equity. His investment <clears throat> amount will uh, will be reduced, 
and the profit uh, will basically uh, be reduced by the interest which has which he has to pay but normally what happens is that this multiple um, increases he can get now a more attractive multiple on his um, on his investment and if you now look at these figures these are quite um, attractive and now if you say that the market for developer is um, is not a 22% return but more like a 15% return what you can do is you can go down here and start to uh, to back solve if you reduce his profit how much returns he still gets so now this is uh, is getting uh, is getting quite low so we might have to give him a bit more return Voila, maybe even a bit uh, more. Voila, maybe 16, uh, let's say 16 uh, per percent. Now, once I've adjusted this, I can go back and check the revised uh, residual land value. So this, uh, this check here allows me to further fine tune this analysis and clearly um, figure out the point where we believe the land is worth so that the developer is still able to make, uh, in this case, a 16% uh, IRR on his, uh, on his uh, investment. So I hope this, um, <clears throat> this uh, demo was uh, useful. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com for more models and uh, financial modeling uh, tips. A link to the model is also included in the description uh, below. Thank you for watching.